Hi friends, Will here. Today's plan is to do a little bit of self-development. I have got this can of liquid death sparkling water. I'm going to create a short bottle shot or can shot in this case and it's an opportunity for me to play around with some creative lighting and the plan is to use the TV as a background like a little bit of virtual production, ghetto virtual production, DIY, if you will. We're gonna try and get some nice textures on the TV. I've got a couple of Amaran T2C tube lights, which I'm gonna use for backlights, and then a nice LED cob soft boxed light overhead. And yeah, we're just gonna see what we can get. So I need to set some lights up, and I thought I would bring you along for the ride today. So let's see what we can make. I'm pretty pleased with how that came out. Not bad for a couple of hours of playing around. So let's cover some of the stuff that I did, the equipment that I used and how I went about creating that video. Everything was shot on the Sony A7S III in S-Log3 and I used the 90 millimeter f2.8 macro lens, which is just a really great lens. I love using it for anything kind of product focused. So that was the camera. I used um, just a cheapo tripod just to hold the camera up and then when it came to positioning the cam I used a, a coffee table, a couple of old books just to prop it up and then a cheap Amazon product turntable. Not necessarily amazing, did the job. Yeah, it's fine. It's, it's cheap and cheerful and it gets the job done. And then behind the can I had obviously a 50 inch LED TV which was playing videos which I found on YouTube, ambient fireplace videos, visualizer videos, that kind of thing. And I played around with a few of them. And then when it came to the lighting, I had the two Amaran T2C tube lights, which are really great lights. The only thing I, I wish um, I bought those just before the P range of lights, the pixel based uh, versions of those tubes came out. So I do wish uh, that I'd held off until those ones had come out because I definitely would have bought the pixel versions uh, if I'd have known they were coming out. But never mind, uh, the, the T2Cs are still a really great light, still have loads of cool effects on. Uh, so they were my backlights. And then overhead, I had a C stand, which was quite important to get the position of the light. And on the C stand, I had the Wee Light Ninja 400, which is a dual color, uh, bi color um, cob. LED video light and on that I had a 70 centimeter parabolic softbox with diffuser and uh, grid to block any spilled light. So um, I would love to swap that uh, Wee Light light out for an Amaran version. They do several uh, COB LED lights and um, I was controlling the tube lights using the Sidus Link app, which is really helpful. Um, it would have been really great if I could have controlled every single light in my set. Um, just from my phone, it would have been amazing. So yeah, that's probably the weakest link. This light here is the, the Wee Light Ninja 400. That's what's lighting me now. And again, wouldn't it be nice if I could just dial it in with my phone? Um, so yeah, I think that's all the equipment that I used to kind of get that look. Setup was fairly straightforward, as you've already seen. I had the two backlights either side of the TV, the can positioned in the center, and then the overhead light overhead surprisingly. The overhead light was there mainly just to bring up the ambient light on the front of the can um, and that did have some challenges of its own. Framing the video was kind of interesting. I did have this big limitation which was the size of the TV in the background so I did have to be quite careful in the way that I framed my different shots and a lot of the composition was kind of dictated by 
where I could shoot from in order to keep that background behind me. Obviously, if it was a real virtual production with a giant wall, then that wouldn't be the case, but I wouldn't be able to do that just in an afternoon in my living room. So, you know, pros and cons. One of the most challenging things about setting up and framing was uh, the reflections. Because the TV itself was slightly shiny, I was struggling a little bit with reflections from the overhead light kind of catching in the screen and, and were visible um, through the camera. Um, in the end, I ended up just moving everything slightly further away from the TV to try and manage that. It wasn't a perfect solution, but I kind of made the most of what I had. So the way I shot it is I set everything up first and then focused on getting my hero shot as the first thing that I wanted to capture. And then from there, I was able to move around, get closer, change the direction of the turntable, focus on the different details of the can I knew I wanted to get. But really, a lot of it was just playing around, playing with the different effects on the tube lights, playing with different background videos off YouTube, and just playing around with different angles, knowing that I was only really aiming for quite a short edit for this, video, so I was just looking for different angles that I knew would play nicely in the edit. Once I got all my footage, got it all into Final Cut Pro for the editing. The first thing that I did was went over to Artlist and selected the piece of music that I wanted to use. I wanted something that was kind of driving and quite cool, so I brought that into Final Cut and then selected several sections of the track and just edited it together into a sort of short um, shorter version that still had a sort of beginning, middle and an end. Um, and I was aiming for sort of 15 to 20 seconds and just the way the bars fell on the music, I ended up with 18 seconds, I think that final video was, which was absolutely perfect. So once I got my music, I was able to start laying those tracks out onto the timeline and just using the beat to add interesting cuts. Now, I did shoot everything in 25 frames per second and I did end up doing quite a lot of retiming in the edit just sort of speeding up the spins of the can or sort of pans and stuff but that was absolutely fine I didn't slow anything down um, it's either at its actual speed 25 frames per second or a little bit faster just to kind of change the pace um, a little bit I then added several different sort of crops and zooms in the actual edit just to add further motion that I wasn't able to capture in the camera. Finally, I added a couple of different overlays, the main one being hair and dust, which I actually talked about in my last video, which is part of a pack from Motion VFX called Emreels. So you can check that out. Just It's kind of like a grungy little sort of overlay. I thought it went quite well for the theme of this video. Because everything was shot in S-Log3, I applied a base grade using the Phantom LUTs, and this is just the ARRI neutral A7S3 LUT from Phantom LUTs, which I absolutely love, and then I just tweaked my exposure a little bit, but really very soft touch as far as the grade on this. Those Phantom LUTs are amazing, and they really did all of the heavy lifting. I can't really take any credit for that. And then once I'd got my basic structure in, I actually silenced the music, went through, and again, using loads of sound effects from from Artlist, I added a fair bit of sound design just to add some subtle feeling to it. And you know, the levels of the sound design are very low just behind the music, um, but I think they make a massive difference to the final piece. I am really pleased with how that video came out and again you know not bad for probably three or four hours effort in total to create that piece. There are definitely some things that I wasn't particularly happy with in the way it came out and things that I definitely feel that I've sort of learned from the experience, which was the whole point, so isn't that great? Um, the first thing being um, reflections are really, really difficult. And when I now watch that video back, there is one reflection at the top of the can and it is the reflection of the overhead light. And I just find it quite, frustrating. It's just a little bit hot and a little bit distracting. And I'm struggling to think of how I could have done that differently, given the space I have available to me. So, you know, I already mentioned earlier that, that one of the challenges was I was getting reflections in the TV. Uh, so I had to move further back in order to solve that problem. But with the overhead light, no matter where I moved it, the can itself is a reflective surface. The only thing I can possibly think is 
if I'd have had much more room, I could have essentially hung a large white sort of, you know, muslin sheet or a, you know, large bed sheet um, sort of around the camera essentially and actually fired my key lights into that blanket to bounce back, which would have potentially given me a better, more pleasing reflection on the front of the can. But that said, that again would definitely, of course, reflections on the TV. So it's all just a bit of a balance there. So I decided with the time that I had to spend, I've obviously lived with those reflections, but I'd definitely be interested to know if you've got any thoughts in the comments of how I could have reduced that hot spot on the top of the, the neck of the can, then do let me know in the comments. Another challenge that I had, again, this is a, a result of using my living room essentially is that I've got this very thick woolen rug which everything was set up on and I'm a first floor flat where I film so the floorboards have got a bit of movement to them which meant that if I moved even slightly whilst I was recording then the coffee table and the turntable and the can and the camera tripod everything just had a little bit of movement in it and one of the things that I struggled with with the cheap turntable was getting it absolutely perfectly level so that when your can is in the center of it and it was turning it wasn't wonky now i did make some minor corrections in the edit where i just rotated the footage to try and sort of mitigate that wobble but yeah that was definitely challenging and i think the answer to that is you know the frustrating answer to that is if i'd have spent a little bit more money on a different motion control turntable something like the syrup for example then perhaps it would have been a little bit easier mount that on a tripod that's got a leveling device in it and that maybe would have helped to mitigate some of the wobble in the turntable and also obviously if i was in like a nice studio environment with a solid concrete floor then that would go a long way to just getting rid of some of that wobble another Another thing that I learned is I should have taken a little bit more time when I was in the shop choosing my can of drink because the one that I got it seemed like it was in pretty good condition but there was one very small dent towards the bottom of the can which will forever frustrate me when I look at the footage and also I, th I thought the can was in great condition but it's amazing what the camera picks up and actually there was just some really light sort of hairline scratches in the sort of paintwork of the can uh, which were way more visible than I thought they would be so if you can take anything from my mistake really make sure that that can is in you know your product is in pristine condition clean it wipe it down before you start to just avoid any little blemishes like that uh, being visible in your product video and the last thing that I learned is I obviously need a much bigger television if I'm really serious about doing virtual production using a TV as a background. 50 inch just isn't big enough to give you the flexibility with your shots, angles and framing. You know, I also love watching movies so sucks to be me, gonna have to get like a 70 inch TV, aren't I? Um, no, jokes aside though, uh, it, it would have made life much easier to have a larger television for the background. And to be honest, I probably could have achieved what I've achieved using the TV as a background if I had just used a black background and a mat, you know, like a sheet or something. I probably could have used overlays and actually achieved most of what I've done using kind of effects in the edit. Um, that said, it's fun to kind of do it in camera and achieve those kind of things um, without needing to do it all in post-production. So. I don't know, wait up. Anyway, I would love to know what you thought of that. I've certainly had a lot of fun doing it and um, I would challenge you to grab a product and see if you can put together something interesting and see what you can learn in the process. I've learned a ton from doing that. It was a lot of fun and um, yeah, I think that's everything. I'll put links in the description to all of the kit that I used to do that um, and the assets, uh, the motion VFX assets, which I mentioned. Um, and yeah, I'd love to hear what you think. Let me know in the comments. And other than that, I'll see you next time. Yeah.